my name is Matt Heyman. I'm with Saunders Construction. Uh, quick background on Saunders. Colorado-based company. We do about $650 million uh, work in Colorado a year. Um, some stuff in the other states if, if our clients ask us to travel for them. Um, and we, we've really taken a focus on sustainability over the last uh, seven or eight years. Um, and I'm going to be talking about how we approach sustainability within construction. Um, just kind of scratching the surface, but, uh, but really, you know, what we're starting to look at, some of the initiatives we've been able to get going, um, and that sort of stuff. Um, we're also a privately owned company. Um, we're employee owned, but we produce a CSR report. Uh, which basically I'll, I'll be touching on as, as we go through this presentation. Um, but it's a, it's a way for us to capture data on, on a bunch of different aspects of what we do as a company, try to be honest as possible, um, and then get that data down, put it in a public area where everybody can see it, so it keeps us honest, and we have something to be able to track against as, as we're going. Um, so the first initiative I want to talk about um, is our paperless initiative, which I'm doing terrible at right now because uh, I've got a paper in my hand. But uh, we, uh, we started the, our paperless initiative in, in 2009. Um, a, lot, a lot has to do with that with the use of uh, BIM 360 field and glue. Um, this gentleman right here is Tony Street. He's one of our senior superintendents at Saunders. Um, and we picked a job that he was working on in the hopes that he'd be able to kind of rally his troops and, and hit the ground running with this. Um, obviously, we wanted to, to go paperless on all of our job sites, but we needed to... Uh, prove that it worked. We needed to prove it to our project teams, to ourselves, um, that it made sense from a viability standpoint because everybody was so used to working the old way where you know, you'd get an RFI and you'd cut it out, you'd, you'd tape it in the, the working set that was sitting on the big desk that everybody would go to, right? Um, that's the way we always, we'd always done our jobs. So we approached, we approached Tony on the Triangle Building and said, hey, Tony, let's, you know, we're going to go paperless on your job and it might hurt a little bit, um, but work with us on it. And, uh, and hopefully we, you know, we can get some good data from this and we can prove to our other project teams um, that it's going to work. Uh, so by, going, by starting the initiative on, on the Triangle Building, um, you know, at, at first glance, the, the guys weren't sure about it. We thought we were going to get a lot of pushback from uh, the other superintendents, from the field guys. But they quickly saw, by, by using BIM 360 field and glue, um, having everything on their iPads, they no longer had to go to the drawing set that was in the project trailer to get the most up-to-date information, right? They didn't have to worry if an RFI was posted because when they'd sync their iPads, all the information would be right there. So, so right away, you know, where we thought we were going to find most of our pushback from the project teams, the guys actually out there using it, they were the ones that were like, we need this on our jobs because it makes us more efficient. Um, so that was kind of a 180 from what we were, we were expecting. Um, in a single year, we tracked 34,000 issues, just a couple numbers, and, and 6,000 checklists within BIM 360 Field and Glue. Um, and it really, you know, it just increased our efficiency. And then from that point, all of these guys, as, as they, you know, went on to other jobs, um, Tony was picking up the phone and calling other superintendents and saying, hey, if you're not using this on your job, if you don't have a, the, the paperless initiative, you've got to get with it because it's going to save you time and money. So that's kind of a reoccurring theme that I want to talk about, and it's, it doesn't all come down to money. You know, we're, we're trying to do these things for the right reason, but you need something to make it stick, right? You need a reason why these project teams are going to want to recycle, or you, or you need a reason why they want to go paperless, and, and our avenue is making them more efficient at their jobs. Um, we, we began recycling on all of our jobs in 2011. Uh, this is a, a photo from one of the buildings we imploded last year on our ninth and Colorado job site. Uh, it was 13 city blocks that had been somewhat abandoned in, uh, in Denver uh, for the last 10 or 12 years. So it was a pretty dilapidated site. Uh, this was just one of the buildings. Um, and before, uh, before this year, before we started tracking the numbers for that job, we had recycled 100 127,970 tons uh, diverted from the landfills. Now, going back to that CSR report, uh, you know, we're, we're, we're continually tracking all these numbers. We're, you know, we're, we're keeping the slips. We're, we're storing them in a place where everybody can see it. Um, this job alone di diverted 147,000 tons from the landfill. Um, so we were able to recycle about 44%. Um, going back to why, why were we able to make this work on the 9th and Colorado job site? 
Um, obviously, we want to drive our teams to recycle. We want to, you know, go get them. We want to say, hey, do it for the environment. But, but there's got to be a reason why, why our, our demo contractor is going to recycle 147,000 tons. And it came down to money on the 9th and Colorado job. Um, the, the total value for the demolition was about three times what he ended up charging the owner to do the demolition on the site. The only reason why this job, or one of the main reasons why this job was able to pencil out was because that, that de demolition contractor came to the table and said, look, I'm estimating that there's this much recyclable materials on the site. Um, it's, he's taking the risk upon himself to then go and de de demolish 13 city blocks, right, over the course of about a year and a half and taking the risk upon himself to say, okay, I'm gonna sell all the copper, I'm gonna, I'm gonna recycle all the concrete, all the structural steel, I'm diverting all that from a landfill and he's getting paid for it, but he was able to, to cut the demo cost in about a third. So that, that's, that's making this site actually work, which, is, which I think is pretty cool. Um, so moving right along, this is, uh, we're, also, we're also starting to use uh, Insight to delve into value engineering a little bit. Um, I didn't give you really a background of myself, but I'm the, I'm the integrated services manager at Saunders, so I'm like the construction nerd of, of, the, of the company. That's what all the superintendents call me lovingly. Um, but so like I, I, I do all the BIM stuff, right? Um, we're starting to look at Insight and using that to help um, guide decisions that are being made uh, from a value engineering perspective. Uh, a lot of times value engineering gets a very bad rap, right? You don't wanna, that people try to come up with uh, different terms for it, like target-based engineering. Um, but it only gets a bad rap when you're not making informed decisions about, about the changes that you're trying to make on a job. So for instance, we were looking, uh, we brought our Saunders headquarters, uh, we just finished this, this job last year and moved in uh, probably six months ago. Um, and we used Insight as a tool and uh, they're gonna play a video here in a second. We might just let it roll in the background. Um, we used Insight as a tool to help analyze uh, what our options were for value engineering on, on our particular job or uh, you know, model-based engineering. Uh, one of the, the, so as this is rolling through, it's gonna kind of show you how Insight works. Um, you have your energy optimization and you can look at different things like window shades. Are they gonna make a difference on on really the efficiency of the building. Is the R value of the roof gonna make a, a big difference on the efficiency of the building? Um, one of the things we found on this, although we want, you know, we thought, yeah, window shades have to make a difference because we have a lot of windows on this building. Turns out they actually didn't. Um, so by running it through this program, we said, okay, well maybe we don't need shades on the entire building. We just put them on the south side to keep the glare off people's computers, right? So that was a very well-informed value engineering decision that wouldn't necessarily be very intuitive without a tool like this. Uh, similarly, the uh, roof uh, R value, um, basically, as, as we're running through here, basically going from R, you know, 20 to R 50, we could we could have gone to R 100, wouldn't have done anything. So so it's very diminish, diminishing returns at a certain level. Um, Insight helped us identify that. Um, so this is a this is a tool that we're starting to use quite a bit. And uh, we're getting more and more excited about it the more comfortable we get with it. Um, it's one of those things you need to almost, w when you first start using it, you've got to prove it to yourself before you can sit down in front of a client and say, hey, this actually works, right? Um, but you know, don't hesitate to jump in here because it's a, it's a great tool for looking at some of this stuff. Um, I've got about five minutes left. The last thing I want to talk about um, just kind of to, to wrap it up, it all goes back to being honest with yourself, right? So when you're tracking these numbers, if, if you fudge numbers going into how much you recycled or if you're lying about how much uh, the R value on a wall is going to save you because you want to, you know, you want to tell people that you've got, you know, the most insulated building in the world, but you're not really looking at what it's going to do, it doesn't do you any good. Um, same thing with, the, you know, the paperless initiative for us. So if, if we weren't honest with ourselves and said, hey, we need to figure out a way to make the teams, this has to make the teams more efficient, otherwise they're just not going to do it. Um, that was us being honest with ourselves. So, so Saunders pr uh, produces a CSR report every year. We've been doing it since 2010. And it's a way for us to back, back check um, where we've been, where we're going, and uh, 
basically just see how we're progressing and where we may be falling short. Um, so on that ninth in Colorado job, for instance, because we diverted, you know, this last year we diverted 147,000 on that one job to the landfill. Well, we also sent like whatever 54 percent more to the landfill. So this year's CSR report is going to look really bad because we're going to have sent like 250,000 tons to the landfill from that one job. Um, so you kind of got you, you have to you have to learn to take the good with the bad. It's not all you know. You can't do the greenwashing.